Hey guys, this is Manu Kalia, physical therapist and Ayurveda herbalist. So uh, I wanted to talk to you guys today about um, knee arthritis. And uh, so I see a fair amount of patients who have all sorts of different knee problems. And uh, knee problems are probably one of the more common uh, orthopedic issues that we deal with in our society. And uh, more and more people are getting knee replacement surgeries, arthroscopic uh, surgeries for whether to uh, clean up a joint, to breed tissue, uh, and or also for um, injuries, you know, whether repairing the meniscus or your ligaments, ACL, uh, PCL, or, or the other ones too. Uh, so um, that, that's why I thought this would be an uh, appropriate topic. And since I get asked a lot of questions and a lot of people are coming with arthritis of the knee too. Um, and this is applicable not just to, for uh, the average person, but people you know who are uh, engaged in sports and athletic activities. Uh, for example, I see a fair amount of runners too, uh, who are uh, starting to stay competitive and stay uh, and continue running, uh, but are starting to have uh, knee issues, you know, uh, arthritic problems or degenerative problems in those joints. Uh, so first of all, um, what are we talking about exactly when we say knee arthritis? Um, I think a better word to choose would be uh, knee or, the, or arthrosis would be a better word instead of arthritis. Uh, anytime you have itis uh, behind a word basically means that it's, there's inflammation involved. You know, you could say conjunctivitis, sinusitis, any kind of itis means inflammation. So arthritis essentially means that the joint is actively inflamed, okay, and which is not always the case. Um, so the word arthrosis is a better word, I think, because it's degeneration of the joint. So it's wear and tear that's taken place, whether over a course of time, uh, and most of the time these problems take a while to develop and they you know, progressively get worse over time if they're not managed properly. Uh, or, you know, you can't, sometimes it's also fairly quickly somebody has an accident or injury and uh, so right after that, uh, the joint, uh, there's so much trauma to the joint, it does gets degenerated and worn out. Um, so essentially, you're wearing out the cartilage within the joint. So if this is my, uh, this is my knee joint, you know, the top bone is your femur uh, coming together, meeting with your tibia, the bottom bone, so which makes a hinge joint essentially. And on top over here sits your kneecap or your patella. Okay, uh, which also creates your uh, it creates your patellofemoral joint. So whether it's the cartilage between those two bones or uh, underneath your patella that's getting worn out or degenerated, right? Or for that matter, your synovium, uh, or, or um, which is the covering around these joints, right? Uh, or fraying or degeneration of the meniscus, for that matter. So any of these things um, can cause. Uh, um, uh, can be termed more towards arthritis or arthrosis, degeneration of that joint. So wearing out all, all these tissues, whether it's because of um, poor lifestyle choices uh, or uh, injuries or excessive uh, athletic activities uh, or uh, the person's constitution, your genetic makeup. Some people just have better knees than others. You know, there's, uh, there's some component of family history here too. Uh, and in lifestyle choices, whether if you're you know, overweight, it's going to wear out those, uh, basically all those weight-bearing structures even more, right? Uh, and, uh, or if I've, uh, you know, if I've been playing basketball for 20, 30 years, a lot of jumping and pounding on hard ground is going to reduce the life of those knees too. Um, dietary change, uh, a diet makes a huge impact too. So poor uh, 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 foods or diets, and especially uh, poor combinations of foods uh, for the person's individual person's constitution uh, is also going to lead to uh, problems in the system, right? Overall, poor health will lead to poor health of your joints too, just like it can lead to poor health of your um, other systems like your cardiovascular system or your uh, like in diabetes. Uh, so any all those things will affect your joints too. So whether it's the diet, whether it's the activity level, uh, whether it's the environment you live in, um, and um, you know what can result in those uh, changes that might take place in a joint. So now uh, these are the things that are impacting the joint. But once you have those changes and you're having problems, how to get how to um, effectively treat those problems and be able to do the things you want to do. Um, so uh, I think here the Eastern perspective is much better in my view 
uh, and I've seen thousands of patients with knee problems, and I find that um, the Eastern per perspective is much better at um, defining and also uh, being more specific as to the different types of degenerative conditions that are going on in a particular joint. So and what I mean by that is, so for example, the Ayurvedic perspective will say, uh, um, uh, uh, list different types of uh, arthritic condition going on, for example, in a, in a knee. Uh, so I'll give you an example. Uh, my uh, first knee patient comes in and the person has um, a moving, shifting pain of the joint. It comes and goes. Okay, the joint doesn't is not swollen. It's not hot to touch. In fact, it's cold to touch, right? There's more cracking, popping in the joint. Okay, uh, possibly even the skin is kind of dry around the area. Okay, uh, the person uh, uh, does not like excessive movement. If they move around too much, too much activity, the joint hurts more. Weather changes becomes cold. It's cold and windy. The joint feels more pain. Okay, there's stiffness in the joint. Uh, the joint responds better to rest, uh, warmth, uh, 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 and, um, and uh, support. So you're wearing a brace or unloading the joint by using a crutch or something else or cane. Any of those things to take the pressure off the joint makes the joint feel better. So that's one type of person or the condition that's coming in. Second arthritic condition that comes in, the person says the, the joint gets a little bit swollen. It's, very, it's red or hot to touch and does not like massage on it, right? Does not like too much movement either, okay? Uh, excessive heat aggravates that joint, even weather or temperature for that matter. And oral, you know, if the person is consuming uh, heating foods, you know, hot spicy food, alcohol, any of those things are going to increase the, increase the, the hot quality uh, in the system, which might aggravate the joint even further. That's a different kind of joint or, or, or arthritic condition that uh, is there. So the third patient comes in, might present with something like a, a stiff, achy uh, joint that has swelling in it, but it's not hot to touch. Okay, so that condition uh, it might feel better with movement, with some warmth, it feels better. The person says, well, you know, it just gets, if I stay in one position too long, it gets stiff and achy. But when I get up and move around, it warms up and it feels better to me. Okay, when I first wake up, it's very stiff. If it's cool or, uh, or cold, it gets stiffer. But when it gets warm and I walk around on it or I move a bit more, it feels warmer. It feels easier for me to get around. So, uh, <clears throat> so each condition is, each of those patients is very different. And so, I, you know, you have to look at individual differences as to how specifically your arthritic condition is presenting. Okay, whether it gets aggravated by excessive activity, whether some activity uh, makes it feel better, allows you to move better whether the massage feels better for the joint, whether the unloading feels better for the joint, whether the heat feels better for the joint, right? And uh, whether certain foods or, uh, uh, make the joint feel better, okay? And whether um, rest or certain exercises are better for that joint, okay? So now in terms of treatment, so you have to keep all these things in mind. And then also in terms of treatment, you have to say, okay, well, this joint does better with the application of uh, um, some warm oil. And there are different herbal oils too, pertaining to specific conditions. You know, and, there, and of course, there's a bit of a overlap between different conditions too. So, um, uh, so you have to keep in mind that you might be having two separate conditions going on within a joint, okay? So you have to kind of uh, uh, um, address, uh, make up your strategy based on that information also. So now, in terms of treating, uh, uh, as I said, using the, whether I want to use certain warm herbal oils for massaging the joint to improve the circulation, uh, remove uh, um, uh, um, metabolic waste products out of that joint, facilitate the healing process for bringing fresh nutrition into that tissue, okay? Plus increase the lubrication of that tissue by doing the warm oil massage and application of heat to, uh, again, to allow ease of movement, okay? Um, and exercises, non-weight bearing exercises. I've talked about it in, uh, um, in my videos and at length about how important I feel is to first start off with the non-weight bearing exercises till you can tolerate the weight bearing uh, positions more, okay? Use of bike or walking in water. So all these things are much better to do because uh, you're not loading the joint, not irritating it. Um, uh, application of heat I already mentioned. 
um, supporting the joint using a brace or ace bandage or any of those type of things to give it a little bit of compression, a little bit of support around that joint. Um, and oral uh, herbal products that are out there, um, there's uh, quite a few wonderful things in Ayurvedic medicine and traditional Chinese medicine too that are very good for addressing arthritic problems. I think probably the best that I've uh, compared to most other things out there that I have seen. And uh, certain Google formulations are very good. Turmeric, ashwagandha, uh, and there are a host of other herbs that are very good and formulations that are very good, not only for detoxifying the joint, improving the health of that tissue, improving mobility, controlling the pain, uh, and just uh, allowing the joint to heal better and faster. Okay, um, so you have to really look at a lot of these other things and then uh, look at all the other uh, treatment oriented things that you need to do for a particular condition. Okay, so I hope it just kind of gives you at least a, a, a basic a framework of how you want to look at uh, when you're saying arthritis of the knee and I have this kind of problem going on, what kind of framework you want to look at your individual problem in and then look at your uh, treatment strategy, how you want to implement it. So uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment. And uh, I have lots of information on my site on knee problems uh, and various injuries and rehab. Uh, and also uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And uh, thank you.